or it's okay, it can help. But going through some experience as a trainer that you really reflect on your behavior, on your patterns of how you work with, with kids, um, especially what to do if there is some violence present. Yeah? It's even more it's even more efficient. Um, so today's meeting, it's, uh, we're going to start with some warming up, getting to know each other so that you will know who is here, that you can have them in the breaks and then after the, the meeting where we have a, a small lunch here, that you have a chance to talk with them and maybe um, start some new projects or start some new dialogue around that. Later on, we have a special guest here, uh, Kerry Stepancic, PhD. Uh, he will talk about the role of a coach in prevention of, of uh, violence in sport. And you will have a chance to ask him questions as well. We'll have a discussion with him. Then we'll have a short break. And after the break, we have one hour of more participatory practices. Like we're gonna, I'm going to invite you to sit in small groups and discuss a couple of questions regarding violence in sport. Yeah, how can we create more safe environment for the students, for the kids that we work with? Um, and on the end, we have a, another guest from Olympic Committee of Slovenia. Who, uh, he will present some practice that Olympic Committee is like uh, developed, I think, a couple of years ago and is running for the last couple of years, as we know quite successfully. And then we close up at half past one for sure, we finish and we have lunch together. And now for a start, I would just like to invite the president of uh, GIP, of this uh, asso uh, uh, association that, we are, that, that these facilities are part of, just to say a couple of words as a, as a welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Lauren, good morning from my side. Uh, I'm very glad to, to welcome you here on this uh, early early winter day uh, here in Sportno Društvo Gip in Ljubljana. Uh, I'm very happy that we decided a few years ago to, to jump on this boat uh, called Erasmus uh, to, to get the opportunity to, 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 to work with you, to host you uh, here in, in our in our in our place, uh, I am very proud of my team, which is uh, involved in all this uh, work with this and also other project which we are running at the moment. I am uh, of course also very proud on on you, our partners. So to have opportunity to work with you and to learn also from, from you. So, uh, I wish you a very uh, successful day, successful project, and uh, nice staying in Ljubljana for these uh, few, few days. And uh, I hope we see us uh, soon in some other, uh, at some other uh, 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 thank you. Thank you. Okay, now just to, that we get a picture of who is here today on this meeting, I will just ask you that we go one circle and just like as quick as possible because it's quite a big group, just say your name, um, organization that you work in or that you're part of and the country you are coming from. Yeah, so actually three, three words. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we start here. Uh, those of you who don't have haven't seen me yesterday, my name is Dia. My colleagues here from the Bulgarian Sports Development Association. Uh, sports project coordination. Yes. Okay. And please talk as loud as possible so they can hear you as well. I'm Dia, I'm a Bulgarian part of the I'm Suleyman, I'm from Bulgaria, part of PSG. Hello, I am Edith from Turkey. Uh, I am the project coordinator of Park and Club Cross Blue Park and Sport Club, Sport, uh, Club Association. Good morning, uh, Berat, Berat Ezer. I'm also from Turkey, from Kargenç. I am Milena, I am from Italy, Udine, from Filka, that is uh, Judo Federation. 
I'm Gianni. I'm also for Italy, from Italy, I'm project uh, coordinator from Filcam. Uh, Ariosha, from Sportsman Gip, the Dallas Hello, I'm Visna. I'm domestic coach from this facility, Gip Shishka. Hi, I'm Gara, and I'm a gymnast. Shishka, uh, uh, also from here. Uh, I'm judo coach. I'm judo coach, Marco, also. Don't care for Absolutely. <laughs> my name is Damir, I'm from Bosnia and I'm from the level organization. Uh, my name is Damir, I'm from the Football Federation of Slovenia. I'm Hanna and I'm from Slovenia and I'm a gymnast coach. Hi, my name is Toma, I'm from the Reka Sports Association from Croatia. Hi, my name is Mario, I'm a coach from Croatia. <laughs> Hey, is Croatia a great sport to sell? Well, Croatia, Reka, 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 I'm Alexandra, I'm from Russia, and I'm from the University Sports Association. Um, I'm Anouk, I'm from France, and I also work for Elisa. Uh, Žiga, from uh, Sports Union of Slovenia, Sports Union of Slovenia, Žiga. Um, I'm Sara from Jiu Jitsu National Federation of Slovenia. I'm also a competitor. I'm Blaš uh, from Ljubljana. I'm a judo coach. <coughs> I'm Xavier. I'm from Portugal, from Ginazo Football Association. Kuli from Portugal, GCP Ginazo Football Association. Hello to everyone. My name is Matas Slakic and I'm from Boston, Herzegovina. Marta Jukoc, bravo. Organization from Boston Herzegovina. Um, hi, I'm Natalia Regina, Secretary General at Sportman Hello, uh, I'm Katya, I'm uh, the project manager uh, of the uh, projects uh, here in uh, Sports Society Gift. My name is Barry Stepanchich. <coughs> I apologize for my voice. I'm not corona positive, just just uh, <laughs> Voice, but uh, Institute Educare Institute from Slovenia, and I'll be today with you. And thank you for inviting me. And I hope we'll have a great half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Jaka Slovenia used to be a judo coach, not anymore. Okay, now for the next ten minutes, nine minutes, I would invite you to to go with to stand up and find two people that you don't know yet, or at least don't know yet so well. Yeah? Just that we break the ice a bit because we want to start the dialogue. Yeah? And we have a conversation. Hello, what are you? Okay, just a second more. Here. Just a second more. I just want to give you a question to discuss. Yeah? Guys, just a second more. Yeah. I'm very glad you just jumped in. I would just like to give you a question to discuss for the next nine minutes. Why was it important for you to come to this meeting or to take part of this project? Yeah, Just to discuss shortly and present yourself again because probably you didn't catch all the names. Nine minutes. I just don't know. Okay, thank you. I hope you, you got to know at least a bit about your colleagues now. And now I'm giving word to. Very sympathetic for the next half an hour. Okay, great. Um, they told me I can take this off because otherwise you won't hear me very well. Can everybody understand me? Yes, perfect. If you don't, it's my fault. So I'll try to try to uh, be better. But before I start, before I say, "Znam naša braća i sestre iz Hrvatske iz Bosne, dobro nam došli." Our Turkish friends just taught me that it's 
Hoş geldiniz. Hoş geldiniz. Okay. Dobrodošli okay. Bulgarians. Yes, okay. And for us, I know the Bulgarian and then we have uh, Bienvindu. 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 And we have French who would be Bienvenu. And our Russian friend, let me see if I got it right. Let me see. Uh, together. No, uh, uh, <laughs> The problem is you have to write correctly and I'm not. So you have to help me. Okay. <laughs> so I was thinking, how did they get me here? How did I get here? So I'm from Slovenia, very kind of strange name. But I lived for 18 years in US. In uh, I left when I was 18 and I came back when I was 36. So I left when there were no cell phones. We didn't have really computers, no internet. So I had to buy a small calling card to call a home. And um, I did my high school there, my college. I got my master's, another master's uh, in diplomacy. I worked. And then I found out that education is a better playing field to be a teacher, to be a coach. So I got my doctorate in education policy and uh, specifically in bullying prevention. So since we were talking about violence and how to prevent it and what to do, I thought this would be a great thing. Uh, so thank you for the invitation. And, uh, but I'm also an amateur magician. So I want to start with a, a little magic trick. What the power of a coach, who's also a teacher, an educator can do. Is that okay? Because if you say no, I'll stop. Okay. And no cheating. One of the things we know in life, to be successful, you cannot cheat. So I have... Six, okay, you cannot see, good. I have six cards. One, two, three. And I'll, since I see it's very informal, I'll take my jacket off. So I don't have anything in my jackets. So, you can think this is you or your student, the one you help. And we all, does anybody know who these people are, maybe? If the judoist, I think you know this guy for sure. But anybody else, do, do, do you know who this guy is? Okay, the founder, the 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 life and breath of judo, and those two guys, they're a little older. I couldn't find any pictures of them, because this is Socrates and this is Plato. So right around Bulgaria, Turkey, and of course the father of our Western civilization. And I thought about when I talked about, I thought about for the last three weeks how to create this talk between us, this dialogue. I thought this would be a great thing. So before we start, I, I think I knew that there are quite a few of you that are not from judo. Is that correct? Some teachers, teachers in school, teachers, excellent, and some uh, professionals. Uh, this is like. This is not a Slovenian class. In Slovenian class, everybody's quiet, nobody says anything. This is American class. You can say, you get extra points just before participating, okay? So, freedom of speech. So I have three cards, and this is a kid. So when you take one card, when you don't find, when you don't listen to them, when you don't see and try to get something from within, then many times you get nothing. You get nothing. And you take the same discard, the same card away, and I take another card, take another card, and I get what? I get something more because I understand it. He has something more, do you see? But this is not enough. Sometimes when you want to succeed or in poker, what do you need? You need, it's a poker, and you need four, four of a kind. So I take this one away, so I'm not, you can see I'm not cheating. And I'm, I'm sorry, you know, take this one away. And what do I have now? Yeah. Now I have more games. <laughs> so the catch, the role of teacher is really you, it is on you to help uh, a child, a girl, or a boy to find those treasures with it, but they are always there. Understood? Kind of, was I clear enough? Yeah. Maybe, if not, uh, so let's start further. I'll just go with this. Athena, why did I start with Athena? Because when we look at the teachers or our uh, coaches, we always look when I was young that they are wise and their wisdom. You look up to them. So I pray to Athena to bring some wisdom through me today so you 
So you will also um, be able to, to uh, understand what I'm talking about. So I'll just read a short little quote, because this is what will be taught today. That people today read many books, we all do, but without really knowing the real meaning of words. But in ancient times, people knew the meaning of every word that they studied. They understand the, the roots, where it comes from. One who knows the meaning of every syllable, every word, and every sentence is a true poet. Why am I saying this is a poet? Because in ancient Greece, poets, it was more just, just, than just about music. And even the teachers today give only the worldly meaning of the words, but none gives their moral, ethical, and spiritual import. So it is the responsibility of us, of teachers, to disseminate the knowledge pertaining to moral, ethical, and spiritual education, spiritual principles. Uh, besides that I'm a researcher, I'm also part-time educator in school. I teach philosophy, so that's why maybe it's a little bit a little philosophical. Um, so if we talk about, before I want to say thank you to Moimir, I talked to Moimir, you know, we talked about judo. Judo, I learned more that it's a way of life, it's not just sports. So. Uh, we have to understand what education is. It's a way of life of education. Um, and what is the purpose of education? So maybe probably what I'm saying today, most of you guys already know it, but sometimes you have to hear it a few more times, at least for me to sing it. So education has two, sorry, has two root words, in Latin words. It comes from educare, educare which means to foster, to nourish, to feed, just like a baby you have to foster. But the other one is which means to bring out, to adduce, to manifest. This is the thing that Socrates was, uh, Socrates was talking about, that there is something within that we have to bring out. And does anybody know maybe this picture? So this is a picture of a stone. And Socrates many times talked about, does everybody know what a midwife is? Babica, midwife. So talk, Socrates always talked about that he was like his mother, because she was a midwife. The midwives only bring the child out, but he was the one, he was the one to bring out from within the values, the strengths, the, the virtues. And that's what we call an educator. Now, just to say here, because sometimes the new age people misunderstand, you know, you know this. Madonna says, express yourself, you know, just express yourself, do what you want. Well, the true educator knows when you have a, when you have a, a piece of land and when you grow, uh, plant seeds of, let's say, salad or corn, not only the corn will grow, but also what? Weeds, weeds. And the true educator always cuts the weeds. So it's not just express yourself, but know what is the right way and what is not. Or not. Okay. That's <clears throat> so I was mm -hmm. connecting the, the uh, judo and how this relates to sports and how this relates specifically to teachers. What can we do about violence? Because everybody knows violence in general is not good. But we're not talking about that it's not good or bad. But what can we do about it? And um, he was talking about Serioku Zeno, which means that that whatever you do, uh, this, this saying, this maximum efficient use of energy, applies to all types of endeavors. Um, I hope. Um, and it is also to fully utilize one's spiritual and physical energies to realize an intended purpose. So I'm just quoting him. And nicely what he said also here, I thought it was talking about spiritual and physical, meaning educate from without, you know, to bring, to build the skills, to build the knowledge, but also from within, meaning, like Socrates said, Nyotisefton, meaning Nyotisefton, to know thyself, to know who you are. Many times in life, uh, we try to teach everybody else, but we don't know even who we are, where we stand, where we're coming from. And somebody told me that politicians, that many times, <coughs> there are three people, they think one thing, they say another, and they do a third thing. But in life, especially for kids, because you are role models, um, what you say, what you say, what you think, and what you do should be one. And I have to tell you, uh, in my research I found out that um, one of the most difficult things for violence, 
for violence is the lack of uh, cohesive family, family at home, family at home, uh, father and mother. And this has very negative consequences. But they found out that if you have a role model in your life when you're young, be a coach, uh, a teacher, um, um, uh, an uncle even, somebody that those negative effects can be uh, minimized. So why I'm talking to you today is because I'm saying maybe sometimes you think I'm just a coach. I just do judo or I just do athletics or I just do one hour. It's not so as important as math, as science. But all the great scientists, all the great inventors, uh, even this day, you know, Steve Jobs, when they talk about why they succeeded, they don't talk about, oh, my middle manager helped me. They go, my third grade teacher or my coach really believed in me. So um, your knowledge and your expression of virtues will have an exponential effect on others. So many times when we have hard days or we're not knowing who, uh, if we're doing well, remember this. Okay, let's... Uh, yes, and just to go back to what uh, the founder was talking about, that judo is a full circle. It's not just exercise, it's not just sports. And we, when we talk about science, it's a semicircle, CS. But when we talk about spirituality, meaning without and within, we're coming the full circle. Um, okay. Um, does anybody is here also a coach maybe of higher or in, in athletics or anything that it's very competitive? Maybe did you have competitive um, students or, or somebody that was really in competitive sports, maybe like, I'm not saying on the Olympics, but that you were, that you obtained a medal or something. Okay, congratulations. Uh, I have not, but congratulations to you. So, would you agree with this, which Aristotle already said, even before Christ, that excellence is never an accident, that it's really a result of focus, intention, effort, and execution. In fact, what Aristotle said that in life to succeed you need only two things. You need time and you need practice. And hopefully this practice is repeated. Um, probably you uh, you obtained a gold medal, a silver medal, a bronze medal. Yeah, all three of them. All three of them. Okay. Good. Was it was it like mine? Was it magic very quickly or was it No, it's thirteen years of work and training, so 13 years, you know, you reminded me, when I lived for five years in Dallas, so I lived one year in <clears throat> Louisiana, five years in Dallas, three years in California, and the last eight in Washington, D.C. And when I was in Dallas, Luca, Luca Doncic, our Slovenian, you know, they call him, they love him, they call him Luca Magic, Luca Magic. And I always ask, is it magic really, or is it something else? Does it just happen like this? And they say, no, 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 he started when he was 13. He was practicing all the time. You see the magic, but even for this, I had to practice a little bit, you know, so not 13 years. So what I'm trying to tell you, people always try to come to me, okay, Ferry, what are some bullying prevention pro uh, programs? What can we do to quickly fix? Unfortunately, there are no quick fixes. There are no silver bullet solutions. This is, it's only us, only us. I, re I, I remember, uh, remind myself again of uh, our basketball player, Dr Dragic, because he said, you know, in the past, maybe we were even better individually. Even individually, we were better as a team, but as a team, we were not as good. When he was trying to explain why we became European champions for a small country, you know. So, uh, does anybody have any questions? You're even more quiet than my fourth, no, my fourth grade class is very, very, but my ninth grade class, when they think that I'll ask you something, they're very quiet. They look down. It's like, when you're looking down, I don't think I won't ask you, you know, so it's okay. Um, so we talked about Aristotle, we said about Socrates, and uh, Mr. Yaka or Mr. Katya, would you pronounce this word? I think I can't pronounce it. Anybody? Okay. Sushinko. Sushinko is good for today. So, is the cultivation of wisdom and virtue, as well as the study and application of the principle of judo in our daily lives. So, I knew only judo from my brother, 
and I stopped following Judo very quickly when he came back with a broken nose. And then we didn't, we didn't, we didn't, uh, my family was not a part of it. But I didn't know then, but I know now that Judo, just like for a true educator, it's a, um, it's a way of life, it's creating wisdom. And in fact, when I just spoke with Moebe, he said, you know, many times we, they think we're coaches, but coach should also be an educator. Because an educator is always a coach, but a coach is not necessarily an educator. And you hope that the coach understands this, because when you're an educator, you are, you are supporting, you're supporting the path for, for the children or for the, for the students, for the athletes, to bring out within what's latent in them. Now, he was talking about virtue. He was talking about virtue. And I just want to say two things about virtue. We have spiritual virtue that we talk about, that is called, you know, theoretical virtue. In fact, it comes from the word theoria. We don't have any Greek friends, but it means, theoria means contemplation of truth. Theoro because uh, theos and oro means God, to see God. And in fact, in olden times, theoria means somebody who experienced, who was practical. Now it's separate. Anyway, and uh, practical virtue, which also means ethical virtue. Ethical comes from the words ethos, which is ethos means something that you repeat. So practical virtue is something that you repeat. And the habit that shapes character. In fact, in Latin is moral, moral comes from the word more. I'm sorry, it was a little bit faster. Why I'm not sure. From the more, which means again, habit, custom, repeated action. So to be ethical is that we repeat constantly what we want to. Uh, and I will ask Yaka how much. Oh, you wrote it. Still 10 minutes. Okay, I'll be fast. Um, I will. I will go to this. So when we talk about violence, violence is something that is not in balance, like in Judah, like something in balance. So we could talk about balance that you're not virtuous, because virtue is the golden mean between two vices, one of the excess and one of the deficiency, again by Aristotle. So what are the, some of the deficiency in balances? We can see it in sports, we can see it in school. For example, courage would be a balance. Recklessness, when you go, it's too much, you know, reckless driving. Or cowardice would be the other one. So I'll just go control, self-control. This is one of the big, biggest things. Um, I, I go often to India, and there um, the Tibetans also. The, most of the Tibetans live in India. They told me they're saying that it's it's better to live one day as a tiger than a thousand years as a sheep. But a tiger is dangerous. But if a tiger has self-control, then that's it's always to be better than a, a tiger. So um, let me go other ones. Generosity, waste, avarice. Avarice means that you are that you are um, um, Slovenian. Skrt, skupu, or oh, this doesn't help our really? Turkish friends. Really, uh, greedy is uh, uh, oh, uh, 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 that you don't spend. Thrifty, that you that you yeah, something like this. Uh, magnificence, you know that you are magnificent, ostentatious, that you're too pompous. Uh, well, for, I have another one. In the other one, so meekness. Is weakness is that you are just balanced. Anger would be on the other side of foolishness, friendliness. This one I didn't find. Humor, vulgarity, boorishness, decency, justice. Like you said, maybe greedy, getting more, getting less. So I now uh, I want to say. So what are the reasons for violence, just in general or in sports? Well, basically, there's seven. I hope I'm not dyslexic. Seven. So it's Power, somebody wants to feel power over somebody else. It's popularity, you want to be popular, you want people to appreciate you. Maybe sometimes you want payback, you know, payback like a movie with, uh, uh, I forgot his name was. No, no, yes. no, yes. Thank you very much. You see, a good teacher is only as good as his students because they help you, so thank you very much. This is, you can correct me every time. Problems at home, this is a big one. Maybe you see violence. Pleasure. Some people even have lack of empathy. We find this in schools now with the kids. It's generally the kids you have to learn empathy, but now it's even more because it's all about me, 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 me. Prejudice, something that you don't like somebody, a foreigner of different sex, religion, so on. And peer pressure. Many times it's peer pressure. In fact, for bullying, what I'll talk today a little bit about bullying, it's mostly peer pressure. And you feel you can be a bully and a victim at the same time. 
Um, now, I see that not everybody is from five minutes. Not everybody is from. Um, um, okay, thank you. Not everybody is from judo. So I wanted to. How sports is really important. In fact, sports, even in Greece, was the, one of the most important things. They always talk about uh, the philosophers, uh, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle. They say that the for kids, for kids to succeed in life, they have to have two things. They have to do music. Music at that time again. It entailed more just music, but also moral and ethical education and sports. And UNICEF, in their report, they found out yes, we all know that sports is very important, but we are finding out that there is more abuse in sports than than we would like it to have. And in fact, Cardio, uh, Picron, and McCloskey found out that feeling emotionally, socially, intellectually, and physically safe is possibly the most unfulfilled uh, need among students from students that they're little until end of high school. So, what, what kind of violence, when we talk about violence, just a little bit, there's high level violence and low level. High level, we know, shootings and all this stuff. Low level is, is bullying, it's innuendos, it's exclusion, it's something that is not easily seen, but it has a longer negative uh, consequences. Um, normative uh, consequences. So today, this is the most prevalent, so I'll say a few words about bullying. Because, um, although, if you want to know about high-level violence, see, uh, U.S. Secret Service found out that most of the shooters, you know, school shooters, have one thing in common, and that they were victims of bullying. About over 70% of them were victims of bullying. Uh, bullying, people say that bullying creates um, Suicide, not, not necessarily. Bullying creates depression, and depression creates then, uh, because of depression, you can uh, uh, have a, uh, do a suicide. What I'll do with this PowerPoint, I'll add some more things, but you will have them. I just add this was from my dissertation basically what can be physical bullying, verbal bullying, uh, non verbal bullying, and uh, indirect or direct. For example, the girls are more indirect. And they spread rumor and gossip, and the boys are more physical. But before the, at the beginning, you uh, at the beginning, you I asked you, what do you think we can do? In my dissertation, when I did the U.S., we looked at different programs all over the United States. We looked at teachers that worked at large, small, uh, very small schools, public, private um, schools that are poor, schools that are rich. And we found out that bullying or violence is really a symptom. It's not the root of something. It's like a, it's like when you have a headache, and somebody wants to give you pills all the time, you know, licador, to to help you help with the headache. But the problem is the way of life. Maybe you are dehydrated. You need some more water. And we found out that that the programs do not really work all the time, and that the most important things for stopping bullying is you guys. And in fact, we also found out that in the long term, the most successful bullying prevention programs were those that uh, coaches or trainers or educators work on the path of not spirituality, but on self-reflection, that you try to imbibe those virtues that you try to teach. So, for example, I have a little just normal card, another trick, but it's not really a trick. Let's say this is, you can see me through, yes? You can see through this. Mm -hmm. You can see that you can see it. I'm not. But this is a card. In life, in Slovenia, we play tarot a lot. So I can never change my cards. You get the cards that you're dealt with, that you're dealt. But hope the, uh, so the, what the coaches can do is help kids how to react to those. So for example, I'll put the card in so you can see it in just a second. Okay. You can see it. You, can, you, can, you see it inside. Number three. Yes, everybody. You see it inside. So everybody gets this three. But the, 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 the difference is some people re react to it differently. Do you see the difference? Some people react to it differently. So what I'm trying to say, people, when I show this to kids in schools, they say, "But there, you have something inside. This is a trick. You have something inside." Yes, that's right. We all have something inside. It depends is if we can develop this, or we always just put the number three. 
but it's always number three in the past. So I was thinking today, as we conclude, because I have programs versus personal change. This is what I just mentioned. And the programs normally that we found at the end, one, two years, they don't, they don't, but the personal change, the character, it stays. Um, this is the last what I wanted to leave you with. Many times have you heard of the word guru? You know, in, in our, you know, I'm a spiritual guru or something guru, guru. But the guru really is from Taitriya Upanishads, Indian, means a teacher. And gu and ru is two words, two syllables. Gu means darkness. And ru means dispeller. It can be for the piano, the one who is excellent in his field. Can also be like Plato or like Socrates to know who you are, thyself. But to be that kind of a teacher, and those are rare, I hope I strive to be this one, but I fall short. I admit, I fall short. I wish, but at least I have a broken, but I fall short, is to be on this personal education, on the personal path for education should not be just information, 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 but what little you take that you can integrate it and transform yourself. So um, I think this is shortly it for this. I have, I didn't want to bore you with all the statistics in bullying because we know bullying you have, you are more prone to violence to be in, in terms of uh, uh, sexual violence, in terms of that you don't do so well in school, that you don't have a good job, that you later on that you cannot attain such a high education. But really, I thought that, that to understand that the role of teachers today is kind of maybe reduced, but it's so key because uh, you can have a multiplier effect on everybody else. And if you want to raise the boats of the country, you don't go to economy, you don't go to law, you don't go to diplomacy, but you go to education. So I want to thank you for being part of this program and also to choose a life of educators because I think this is the most fulfilling life in the long term, especially when people will come back, maybe they were not so good in school and they'll come back and they'll say, uh, Suleiman, I remembered your name, or Iris, did I remember her name? Or Toma, they will say, Toma, thank you, you really meant something, you really stirred something in me and put me in the right path. So we have a few more minutes later on for any questions or if you want something else, I am more than welcome to tell, uh, to share this, but I wanted to keep this a little bit broader and a little so maybe we, we reflect where we are now and what our role is and maybe that it depends on us also. Um, uh, depends on us and we have an effect on our young ones and also on our colleagues. So, obrigado, hola, spasiva, who else were? Oh, grazie, and thank you very much for uh, for uh, listening. I mean, this was the best listening group I ever had. No, <laughs> yeah. If this would be in class, I would I have I would have to uh, uh, um, how you say. Record you and I say, kids, be like them. No, no questions. So, thank you very much. All the best. Thank you very much. I have just one more thing for you. I printed. I printed from. Um, I found out that all the great men today, you you change so quickly. You have a role of a father, of a, I'm not sure, of, of, of a girlfriend, of a grandmother, of an uncle, of a teacher of a friend, and we change so much, but nobody has the time to reflect, nobody has the time to listen to yourself, not just to others. And I found out from Marcus Aurelius to anybody else that they took time every day, just a little bit, and maybe not talk about where will they see themselves in 15 years, but maybe to change their habits, because habit means destiny. So they said maybe one thing, and I have this letter for you, I'll give to each one of you, it's blank, and basically it says two things. You have the power over your mind, not outside events. And the, the last one is in Slovenian, but still means in English I'll translate it. We are that what we do repeatedly do. And excellence is not an act, but a habit from Aristotle. So um, to be better, to be better coach, to receive more and to give more, sometimes we have to take time for ourselves. And this is sometimes with reflection. So this, people, if you, uh, uh, if you want to do it in your own time, I would just dispatch along and you can have uh, this for yourself. Is that okay?
right? Thank you very much. And uh, Dan... Dion. Dion, okay, close. Dion, thank you. You will just pass it along. Thank you. And I would still like you to sit in the middle of oh, Yeah, because we still have, before we go to the first break, we have 20 minutes. And I would like to invite all the questions, all the comments, what, what spoke to you most, what touched you most, or any more concrete questions for, for her. If you have questions about programs, about how to implement them, about statistics, you can also tell me now, and I'll put it in the PowerPoint later on, so you will have this at home. I can do this, but um, this is, yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. okay, my first question would be if you could compare the situation since you left for a long time in the US and Slovenia or this part of Europe, let's say, with Bulli, let's say. What the... Yes. Well, uh, I, I found out that, uh, first of all, to, I can speak about bullying in schools. So in schools, in, in the schools, it's basically that U.S. is so different than from us. We have uh, in Slovenia, probably in Croatia, I know in Italy, we have funding for generally and per school, and um, it's national. But in America, I found out because of some kind of research, uh, this kind of research, that it's not only different between funding or how much resources you have a school in a state, but also in a city. Also, in a, so it's very different, and it depends on if you are private or not. Private, we know we don't have much private, many private schools, uh, because in America you normally you, uh, normally schools get funding from tax rate, uh, a percentage of their uh, value of their house, property value. So when you're in the rich neighborhood, you can have one percent, and it's a million dollar house. And when you're in the poor neighborhood, you can have a house, it's a hundred thousand, and you have ten. 10% tax and you get nothing. So it's it's something is resources. The other thing is teachers also. Uh, in America, they sort themselves most of the time in better schools in terms of violence and uh, resources. But uh, and I lived in DC, so DC, it's you know you there are sectors that you don't go to. You know you go there at night, you'll get robbed. So those schools have a it's it's not just just like if you are. Uh, uh, you would like to meditate. Well, if you go to meditation in, in an ashram or in a library, it's much easier than being in a club. Mm -hmm. So the, the environment is terrible. The environment is violence. Also, in, in poor schools, we find out in America that most most teachers come from the local environment. So if you already come up from the environment that is a lot of violence, you will also deal with the pro with problems in a violent manner, you know, so, uh, but I would say that it's, uh, there are way many more programs has been more um, politicized because of the shootings, because, yes, because of the shootings, and, uh, uh, but all the research that has been found, we don't, it's, they're mostly trying to solve the symptoms, but not really making a safe <coughs> an environment, because this takes time, 5, 10, 15 years, and nobody has the time people move. In America, teachers churn, change a lot also, you know, so it, it's very important for those programs that, for example, as a coach, that you are there for five, ten years instead of every year a new coach, because you have to build a relationship and trust. Trust is one important thing, it's like glue in a, in a chair. You don't see the glue, but it's the key to keep everything together, you know, to keep the wood together. And if there is no glue, everything falls apart. So trust relationship, this is very important, and there's no silver bullet, you need time, honesty, and effort to, yes, I mean, this was a very long answer, so I apologize. <laughs> yeah, don't be afraid to ask another one, it would be a bit short. <laughs> yeah, I'll be much shorter. Yeah. Uh, thanks, uh, yeah. I enjoyed the moment. Yes, yes. I have a question. Please. <clears throat> so you work primarily here in Slovenia, you uh, work here. Now I'm here, I'm oh, back. Yeah. Because when I went to India to teach, um, and also for my for my own personal, I met a girl from Ravin, from Croatia, okay. and then she came to visit me in America, and then we married. We came back. You know, you go where the woman the woman goes, <laughs> so, and now we have a small child who is both Croatian and Slovenian, and 
That's yeah. So I'm back now. So you're here. Um, do you know about uh, the bullyproof program? Yes. Yes, you know. The, the name bullyproof. Yes. The name bullyproof yes. is uh, from Jiu Jitsu, Gracie Jiu Jitsu, uh, and they. I think what I've seen for for what I, they are doing, it's a very great program. So. Uh, do you think it would be possible to implement it in Slovenia or in Europe or anywhere else? Actually, that depends. I'm coming from Brazil. Okay, so, go. thank uh, you very much. I want to you very well. Actually, it depends on the level of the instructors for the people that can or be able to teach that. Mm -hmm. And of course, for the society that wants to implement that program. So, ask money. So, money is more uh, important thing. If you have a club that will work together in that sense, they can give their facilities in use in terms of that. We have a kids program based on that. That's the most important thing. In, uh, because I also coming from Judo, we implemented lots of the plays, the drills, you know, games, because through games they teach how to they make takedowns, how to escape from the certain position, how to do the technical stand up, how to fall and, and so on. Um, <clears throat> thank you. And, and I just please. want to pose something that you mentioned the, the two uh, Greek philosophers. They were all wrestlers. Their emphasizes in uh, education yes. in wrestlers. They also also you have the, you, can, you have the sculptures of them having the political views. Uh, we spoke about it. I will take out the outstanding wrestler, runner, or fighter, or the javelin thrower, or something. For, to, I would take the medium wrestler because all of them cannot do what the medium wrestler can do, like the middle, middle range, middle, middle or, or yes. the, of the scale. But uh, for him, as a wrestler, can do all of, all those things. He can run, he can jump, he can ride, and everything. So in essence, what you do, what you do, and what you learn from that is much more beneficial yeah. for, for you as an individual, from the physical and character and personal and so on. Yeah, uh, thank you. It's not really, but uh, you remind me of Socrates when he was uh, two stories of Socrates, you know, trying to be better, trying to know who you are. He was walking in Athens, kind of old, uh, ugly, and he hit in a very important man, rich. And he was thinking all the time, you know, who am I? This question. And the guy hit, and he said, Hey, watch where you're walking. Who do you think you are? Yes, this is exactly what I have been thinking about, you know, <laughs> and uh, Socrates said, if you have a good woman, then you will have success in life. If you have a terrible woman, then you will be a philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this is just a little uh, side joke. But, more importantly, you mentioned something else about friendship. Friendship, we found out, that is the most important factor for prevention of bullying. If you can be friends, you know how hard it is? We know to have true friends, maybe one, two friends in life, because you have to think of them, you have to love them unconditionally, you have to forgive, you have to be able to fight and resolve problems. So when kids can, friendship is the ultimate goal. That's why friends, uh, although Plato said that Socrates is my friend, but truth is the, my greater friend. So truth is, it should always be the basis. But to be friendship, and I think in judo, you have excellent proof through pain and this and through oh, forgiveness. I'm sorry, please, you wanted uh, to say something. But then you have mat stand, doesn't fly. Mat, being yeah. on the mat, doesn't fly. So you need to spend on mat and work on yourself. So you need to be honest to yourself. If you are bad or stuck in some, some position yes. or stuff, you need to work on that to be better. So you need to be on your own path of self-discovery. Your name, I'm sorry. Dami. Dami. Adam in Brazil. Okay, wonderful. I just wanted to mention this one. He said, "You said the man doesn't lie, yes. but to be, you know, Novak Djokovic, the world will tell you quickly how if you lie or not. With you are not first, you're second, or you get more money or not. But spirituality, insight, only you know. You can pretend, you can fake it. That's why you have to be more honest because nobody knows. Nobody knows you. You and your conscience, and that's what can eat you. So that's why sometimes we." Um, we are better at outside because immediately, you know, the, the world grades us. But we have to be this greater. We have to be honest. So thank you for that. Very, can you say a bit more about the body proof program implementation here? If you have some thoughts around that, I haven't seen it here. Uh, did you see it here? That was implemented somewhere. 
Uh, no, but I think it would be very beneficial for the country itself uh, if we would uh, somehow implement it. Yeah. And I think it, uh, I think it's important for us as a group here to know about this and speak about it yes. and try to implement it somehow. <laughs> so I will connect Damir and Yaka's points to point. the program is only as good as the teachers, only as good. So training. Uh, 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 um, uh, implemented to the ability of the local, the local needs and so you said training before you know you, program itself is nothing just like a, a knife is nothing uh, by itself if it's in a doctor he can take me out appendix or in a, in a, um, if it's a bad guy he can kill me so the program we have to be the ones you have to be not only know how to implement it skill wise uh, management but also later on like Damir said Within and this is a life session in Escochene, a lifetime process. I mean, there is no end, and uh, uh, that's what I said. Uh, a community. There are some things that help. For example, that you have a support of an organ organization. So organization has to fund. Not when the director changes and he has a new idea, he takes the money away. So this is the problem with schools. There should be a national policy funded, but also then people should be on this spiritual journey, which is always hard. I'm on a, my own spiritual journey, and I always fall. Thank God you say this. I pick myself up, up like from the mat, but it's not, it's not uh, easy, and we should be. So um, there should be a group of people that work together, that decide, and uh, yes, a nice thing that is always funding, because if there is not funding, also the motivation goes, people go, and, uh, and, and training. Blash, we'll talk in the next step, we'll talk also about the programs that we already know and share a bit about that and how to implement it here. Yeah. Any other question or comment? Thank you very much. The silence is golden. <laughs> so I appreciate it. That's why they talk. So thank you and uh, the best of luck. Uh, even you said programs, but even if it, even if you already think like Dami said, share something. When you have best practices, how the best practices, and through small work you can see hmm, how this would work in my school. This is already this is already enough. Sometimes the change starts with yourself, and then maybe with the group. So thank you. Can I just uh, please to that because I was recently reading a research from the states as well. Um, research made on the college for they were they call it a College for problematic kids, yes. yeah, and they have like very strict uh, regulation. What to do with violent, what violent youngsters, yeah, and it was kind of like lots of punishments, lots of like uh, a little room for. It was kind of a prison, like to calm down. They said, yeah, and they found out that it, it, it didn't work at all. Yeah, that the violence was still there. Yeah? And then they called in the, the psychologists and, and doctors and scientists, yeah? and they found out through the research that the, most of the kids are coming from very violent families and families that dysfunctional families. Yeah? And because of that, the rate of stress hormone in, in the kid's brain was very high. And this was like why they were not surprised by that. Yeah? But the surprise mm -hmm. came when they, were when they were checking the stress hormone after the punishment. Yeah? And each punishment raised the stress hormone even more. So they were like unable to get out of this vicious circle. So it was like, because when the stress hormone is up, it's kind of a fog in the head. You are not, you are not um, capable yeah. of reacting as you want. Well, subconsciously, you react as you want. It's a, I'm sorry, please. Yeah, I just finished in two sentences. Yeah. So what they did then, they started, they, they trained the teachers to respond differently. They didn't like punish them anymore, they didn't like stop, uh, try to stop the violence, but they start like just asking, hey, what's what's going on at home? What's happening at home? How, are, how do you feel? Yeah. And then kids started to talk about their problems at home. They, they started to open, them, open up themselves. So it was not like the prison room was not the prison room anymore, but was the, the, the room for for these deep conversations. So teachers and psychologists were sitting with them there and listening to the, all the stories. And then in a couple of years, the, there were some results that the, the, the violence went down. But it was a, 
like how to really understand the violence? What's what's the reason for what's going on there? In excellent. So basically, Socratic method. But one thing in America that we do often is called appreciative inquiry. Mm -hmm. So appreciative inquiry that you focus on the positive. So it's very easy for us. There no mind. Uh, is a special mind that can judge and see negative. Everybody, from stupid to intelligent. But it's very hard to find, you have to be a very wise man to find something good in a lot of bad things. I, I'm reminded of a quick story of Jesus walking with his disciples on, on the road, and there was a dead, decayed dog already. And Thomas, he was, he went around and tried to shield Jesus away from the dog because it was smelly. And Jesus looked at the dog and he said, Look at the dog, how beautiful teeth he had. His, his owner must have loved him. So because he saw beautiful teeth, he knew that he was taken care well of. So in that terrible thing, he even found something, something good. And what I'm trying to relate to that they found out with kids who are always, especially the boys, they find out, especially for the boys, it's even more, they need more encouragement. They found out if you could find one good thing, uh, compliment them, then they have a goal. Then they see, then they have a goal that they want to strive at. You make it very clear that he's good at something. And then he will. And happiness is, is, is a byproduct of achievement. Happiness is not just happiness for itself. Happiness, you're happy, you're confident because you did something. And that's why you give them small steps. So instead of always criticizing that, for example, in basketball, your defense is so bad, make an office so good that the defense won't be important. Instead of scoring 80 points, make it score 100 and then even though before, even if they score you 90, you will win. So it's a different mindset. Or in America, they always told me, Ferry, everybody has an A, every has, everybody has a 5 in class. You already have a 5. Only you can bring it down. You know, you don't start from 0 go to 5. But it's just a mindset. You already have a 5. So with your effort, just keep. Be the best. So those are just kind of small things. Uh, there are so many. And I think you together, much more wisdom together and experience than me just by itself. So hopefully I'll be later, later on from this project, I look forward to reading something from you. So uh, all the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was asking, uh, you mentioned a little bit of the point of psychiatrists and kind of psychologists in the type of schools. But regarding the states, uh, I believe in most schools, in most schools, elementary, junior high, it's mandatory to see a psychiatrist in the school. Of children to go through maybe once a week, have a, an hour conversation with him. Do you think that can be implemented here? Like it's not. It's not in America. It's, it's not. not. No, they don't have. No. At least not. No, no. no. Some people have. You have rich schools. They have a psychologist. You have social worker. You have um, um, a counselor. Three per one school, and then you have different schools. And when you have ten schools, and there's one counselor, and he rotates around. So it's it's a big difference. Where you live. Do you think that it should be implemented and it should become a policy? And um, do you think what it would be? I think what Yaka just said, even for us, because we are much more closer as educators, like a coach or a classroom teacher, than somebody else who is a counselor outside. Even if you, he knows that you listen, and there is trust, mm -hmm. then things will come out. You know, you sometimes just by talking, you see, hear yourself that something is not good. You know, speak it out. You take some time, like grandma comes. Take a deep breath. What's wrong? You know, oh, he's crying. You know, and he says that it's it's oh, it's um, and that builds his self-esteem because he could achieve something himself or herself. So, but of course, it's good to have. But I'm just saying, many times the politicians they don't like policies that require more money. You know, if only we would have this. What we have now, can we do this with what we have now? And then that depends on us. It's more self-transformation than transformation from outside, getting computers. And also this, just to tell you, teacher, coach, through the research, is the most important factor besides parents for your student achievement, by far. It's not maths, it's not computers, it's not schools, it's you. It is you by far. Although we cannot measure, really, we cannot know what exactly it is. We know when we see it, but we cannot really measure. But it is, it is you. So that's why I think the programs investing in teachers or their skills, but also hopefully virtue that is on your own, is the only solution. I mean, there, there is no, uh, there is no quick fix. But so, what you said that this would hopefully stir you on the path to, to better yourself. But I'm not sure that. This is expensive. I, I know, of course, they pay me as a teacher 10 euros, and for, if a psychologist comes, it's 50 euros, you know, so, uh, so it's, yeah.
Thank you for asking. Thank you for asking. <laughs> because I see you have to be somewhere in America because you have an accent in America. Okay, great. Um, welcome, brother. <laughs> okay, let's finish here for the first part. Let's have a 20 minutes coffee break. Coffee is there, some sweets as well. Juice, toilet is just up the, up the stairs on the right. And we continue with the program at 11. So please be back here at 11. Thank you.